And as you can see, the lift goes up. If you can get someone to touch digital before they go into the store, greater conversion, greater lift. And if you can get someone to touch digital before and pull out their smartphone while they're in the store, they're actually going to spend more and have a greater conversion. It's a myth that showrooming hurts retailers. The best thing that can happen if you're a retailer is to have someone pull out their phone. They're more likely to find out that they're getting it at a decent price and start looking at user reviews and buying more. Retailer and brand adoption of beacon, beacon technology in, has increased app usage in store by more than 15 times. And you know we've come to learn that unless it's your lunch, you don't need it in an hour and you don't want it in an hour. What you do want is to be able to say exactly when you want it and where you want it and have the flexibility if your schedule changes, that can change as well. This is a real-time picture from Thursday of last week of the number of cyber attacks initiated across the globe against companies and institutions across the globe. This is a real-time picture of how this is happening. Think about that a little bit. Think about the number of people who are vigilant in the basement of your building keeping their eye on this kind of cyber attack. What are the two most valuable things that the typical person owns? They own their home and they own their car, and so these are the two that have sort of become a big part of the sharing economy. But any sort of low usage, high value product, you know, where um, like the price point is high and the frequency with which you use it on a day to day or a week to week or a month to month basis is low, um, you know, that is sort of ripe for disruption by a peer to peer market. And what I really love about what Zappos is doing is not only are they using their data to target you to figure out what creatives to show you, what product mix to show you, but they're generating data from this campaign. So if I click men's and I browse men's you know, uh, snow boots or something, you can, you'll be pretty sure that they've gathered that data on me and then they can then tailor my future interactions with them on a one-to-one -one basis. Now that they're targeting specifically me, they're buying just me, not across a big publisher, they can tailor that message directly to me. And so really having a unique message for every, uh, every customer they're touching. Uh, we're effectively making every product giftable. It's uh, kind of combined the two worlds, the thoughtfulness of buying a real product with the uh, seamless experience and kind of ease of buying a gift card. Um, and the outcome is just significant growth. We're talking here, Scott mentioned a lot about what we care about, right? increased traffic, uh, conversion, sales. This is exactly the outcome. We created the first universal checkout uh, the first universe and, and the first universal wish list, which we now put out these 15 million products directly to everyone from bloggers to startups up to really large enterprise media companies. I think Macy's and some of the recent announcements that they've made really start to kind of show how the game in retail is starting to change. And Macy's stock price, arguably at almost an all-time high, and yet uh, last week announced they were going to close. 14 stores, open a Tulsa, Oklahoma fulfillment center, um, continue to ramp up their ship to store and online uh, in-store pickup program, um, which would allow them to cut 140 million in costs. Um, we oftentimes kind of make the mistake of thinking digital is cheap, digital is profitable. Macy's is estimated to have spent about two billion in the last five years to build up one of the most sophisticated omni-channel and e-commerce businesses in the country.